Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation, or should I say a super duper exponential equation, a very very exponential equation. What I mean by that is the base and the exponent are both variables. So we're going to talk about the solutions to this equation, but before that I just want to give you a couple of things about it. First of all, let's think about it graphically. Think about two functions, y equals x to the power x and y equals 1 over square root of 2. Obviously, the second one is, you know, a linear function, which is a horizontal line. The first one is actually much more interesting, of course. So can we look at this function from an increasing, decreasing perspective? Is it always increasing if x increases or is it sometimes decreasing? Let's go ahead and take a look at it from a calculus perspective. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call this y. And don't ask why y equals x to the power x, and now we're going to evaluate the derivative. Now, to take the derivative of this function, it's kind of hard to do because this doesn't follow the standard rules. It's not an exponential function in the definition of calculus exponentials, or it's not, you know, a polynomial either. It's not x to the power 2, it's not 2 to the power x, it's not, nothing like that. So let's go ahead and L on both sides here. That's going to make our differentiation easier and from here we get from using the log uh, the rules of logarithms it's going to become x times ln x now I don't have that problem anymore let's go ahead and differentiate both sides now ln y you're going to treat y as a function of x doesn't really matter just like a u you can differentiate uh, ln u as u prime over u so it's going to be y prime divided by y and the right hand side is the derivative of the product so if we have the product rule the derivative of x is 1 multiplied by ln x plus the derivative of ln x is 1 over x times the first function, which is x. These two cancel out, leaving us with this following expression. And of course, I can multiply both sides by y, and this gives me ln x plus 1 multiplied by y. And since y is equal to x over x from here, I can just go ahead and substitute that, and this is going to give me the derivative of this function. Now, why is finding the derivative critical here? Because you can look at it from a maxima minima perspective. So by setting the derivative equal to zero, we can look for points at which the tangent line is horizontal. Remember, we just talked about tangent lines in a previous video, but uh, when does a function have a horizontal tangent line? At the max and min points, right? So we can just set this equal to zero. Obviously, x to the power of x is not gonna be zero, and don't say 0 to the power of 0 is equal to 0, because it's not, right? As you know, uh, if you know otherwise, you can just go ahead and write it down. But we're going to be setting this equal to 0. And from here, it's very easy to solve. ln x plus 1 is equal to 0. ln x is equal to negative 1. And this gives us x equals e to the power of negative 1, which is 1 over e. So this equation has one solution, and it's 1 over e. Now, what is 1 over e? e is about 2.7-ish, so it's... you're looking at something like 1 over 2.7-ish, well, I would say probably 0. Point, uh, well, well, I could probably give you an approximate value here. It's going to look like 0. 0.368. That's the approximately 1 over e. Now, what does this give us? This gives us a value for the function, right? Where the function has a minimum or maximum. But of course, you can look at the second derivative to understand whether it's a minima or maxima, so on and so forth. But let's go ahead and find the y value as well. This is where things get more interesting. Obviously, y is going to be 1 over e to the power 1 over e. And do you think that's going to be a small number or a larger number, right? That's kind of interesting. And it's going to be actually larger than this one because you're kind of taking the roots of a decimal number. It just makes it bigger. So it's like 0.692-ish. Okay, so those are the x and y values of my point. And I'll show you the graph of this. You know, you're going to see what the graph looks like. And then we're going to go ahead and find the solutions. Or should we find the solutions first and then look at the graph? I think it's probably better to get, get on with the solution. And then I'll show you the graph. And the graph should be a couple pages down. Yeah, there you are, the next page. Okay, let's go ahead and solve this equation now. So I have x to the power x, right, is equal to 1 over root 2. Let's go ahead and solve it. Now, do you think this equation has one solution or more than one solution? Or does this equation have any solutions at all? Well, when you see the graph, you're going to know right away. But let's go ahead and try to solve this. So one of the things I can do is, okay, let me write this as 1 over 2 to the power 1 half. And then from here, I get x to the power x is equal to 
2 to the power negative 1 half because of the reciprocal. And then I can write the 2 as 1 half to the power negative 1. So this is going to give me 1 half to the power 1 half, which, which means that x is equal to 1 half. So x equals 1 half seems to be a legitimate solution. Let's go ahead and see if there's any other solutions. And obviously you can plug it in and you can see that it's going to work. Well, since I was able to write this as, let's take a look at it. Um, so since I was able to write this as 1 half to the power 1 half, I can just go ahead and use that result to get something else. Okay, so now I can write 1 half as 2 times 1 fourth. And you're going to see in a little bit why I do that. You might be like, out of the blue, you just do that. Well, my goal is to get the same base and the exponent. And there's a way to do it. So here, you can write this as 1 half to the second power to the power 1 fourth. And obviously, 1 half squared is 1 fourth. So from here, you get 1 fourth to the power 1 fourth, which means x can also equal 1 fourth. Awesome. Are there any other solutions? And of course, we're looking for positive solutions because if x is negative, you know, it's just going to be crazy. But let me just bring this up as well. Are there any negative solutions? Or you might also bring up something like, are there any complex solutions? Right? Something to talk about. Okay, cool. Those are the things that you want to think about. But these are the real, real solutions to this weird super duper exponential equation. Now, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the graph. And then I'll kind of briefly mention, kind of go back and forth. Because remember, we talked about a minimum or, minimum or maximum point, And we said that the, the x value is going to be 1 over e. Remember that when we go over this on the graph. Okay? So x equals 1 over e is a critical point. So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of the, these two functions. What are the graphs? Well, looks like I have the y equals x to the power x. And this is what happens at 0. So it looks like 0 to the power 0 is 1, maybe? Or is it 0? Is it 1? Or does, that, does it not exist? Something to think about. Anyways, so here you do see the line y equals root 2 over 2, which is a horizontal line, obviously. No x in it. And here you can see the intersection points. Now, here's what's important. One of the coordinates or uh, one of the intersection points is going to have a coordinate of 1 fourth. And of course, the other one is going to be our 1 half. And we found them, right? We verified algebraically. What is in the middle? The minimum point for this function. And what did, I, what did we find for that one? We find it to be 1 over e. All right? That's kind of cool, right? And obviously, the y value can also be found. And it was 1 over e to the power 1 over e, which was about 0.69-ish, right? So if you evaluate root 2 over 2, it's going to be greater than 1 over e to the power 1 over e. Anyways, to keep a long story short, I just wanted to mention that 1 over e happens to be between 1 fourth and 1 half because e is between 2 and 4. If you just take the reciprocals, everything will be reversed. All right? This brings us to the end of this video, and I just want to go back to the solutions. Here we go. We have two solutions to this equation, and they are 1 half and 1 fourth. And thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Tomorrow, I'll see you with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.